Barcelona star is going to Madrid. Well, this transfer is a complete shock. Yeah, I don't know what Jeffy's going to do here. We'll just have to wait and see. So we'll deal with the drama of losing one of our best players later this episode, but now we turn to the transfer market. Early here in season five, we have a lot of money to spend and we're gonna need to use it too. Lionel Messi retired at the end of last season and that's a big hole to fill in this squad. So we look no farther than Bernardo Silva of Manchester City. And he won't come for cheap, but he's been eager to move here for the last five seasons. And for a whopping $120 million, we get our first signing of the window. Not a shabby one at all. Also, Robert Sanchez, 50 million to Fiorentina at the end of last season. So we bring in a replacement, Paul Lopez for 28 million. He will be the backup to David De Gea this season. And we got two new signings in, which means this team's looking really exciting. Honestly, one of the highest rated teams I've ever built on this channel. And they get the job done here in preseason. Four games unbeaten as we tear through the preseason competition. But the team is dealt a blow. First choice right back, Wilfred Singo has his release clause met by Tottenham. After only one season in Barcelona, he wants to move to the Premier League and he gets it. 63 million, it's a good fee for him. And we use that to bring in Pablo Mefeo as our new right back, 45 million. And honestly, making a tidy profit off of that is uh, not too bad at all. So with that said, uh, Spurs, Barcelona, <laughs> you couldn't write a story like this days after stealing our player. So we will be out for revenge here in the final game of preseason. And also real quick, shout out to the Discord community for contributing with the new kits this season. I left it up to you guys and huge shout out to the four who had theirs voted as the highest rated. So we have some shiny new kits going into our first game here. And like I said, it's personal. We wanna get out there and get a result against Spurs. Free kick given away after a beautiful run from Gabriel Menino through midfield. And then Sergi, the set piece specialist, now that Messi's gone, steps up to take it and shows that he can deliver. What a lovely goal and what an important one too. It's personal now between these two teams and Sergi, the one to crack the deadlock. So a 2-1 win takes us through champions of preseason. Not that it matters for too much, but it is <laughs> better than nothing at this point in the season. Juventus are in for Adama Traore, but now that we're financially stable, we're keeping hold of all of our stars unless they force a move. So uh, he is here for the long haul. And I'm gonna try some new tactics this season. Now that we have Bernardo Silva, who's a left-footed right winger, I'm gonna have both of our wingers on opposite flanks cutting inside and see if we can't get something else going on offense here. I'm also gonna dial the defense back so we don't get caught out as much in possession. Hopefully that'll help us. And then finally, for the captaincy now that Messi's gone, I'm gonna give the armband to Pedri. I think he deserves it. He's been with us since day one. And with that said, we can get to the first game of the season. Levante, Barcelona, this is the team. Let's get to it. Martin Tyler here, along with Alan Smith. The action is from La Liga. It's Barcelona. A manager of respect, the Jeff, will be looking to start off the season right. And the question is, how will they perform without Lionel Messi this year? Pedri will be captain, and let's see if he can lead the team to victory. Yeah, real buzz around this ground. Full house. A lot of interest in it. Hope it doesn't disappoint. Well, expectations high in the first match back in action. We gotta show what we've got and it might take a little bit of time for some of the new signings to settle in. It's a chopped and changed squad, but a squad that very much uh, should be one of the better teams, not only in Europe, but in the world at this point. However, we come under a lot of fire here early in the game. Defensively, you get the feeling we still need uh, some time to gel, particularly with single leaving and Maffeo playing it right back. Uh, it's actually Menino covering it right back in this first game while the new signing gets settled in. Offensively, however, I think we know what to look out for. Adama Traore, the beast, cutting inside off of the left-hand side as opposed to his usual right, but it seems to get the job done here. Gavi plays it through for Sergi. Wow, up and running already Barcelona. 20 minutes into the season, this is what you would expect. And it's all gone according to plan tactically. That's exactly what we expect out of Adama Traore. He can cut in on the right foot from the left-hand side, and I don't think that's the first time we'll see a play like that uh, over the course of this season. Lovely goal as well for Sergi. He's struggled a lot with injury over the last two seasons, but now that he's finally fit, this is his chance to really establish himself. And on goes Adama Traore, again, cutting in from the right-hand side, and this time he goes at it alone, and he finds a goal. 
Well, star player of the match so far here at Dama Traore. A deserved goal, and although he didn't get an assist in the first play, uh, he might as well have. It's lovely play, and a really, really good showing here already from Barcelona. First game, first win. Now, it's just a matter of consistency. So it's on to the second. Barcelona, first home game of the season against Getafe and Bernardo Silva. Woo! How about that? Picks out Sergi. Another goal for him. And I think we know what the talking point is. That front three, uh, Adama, Sergi, Silva. Give them an acronym if you want. <laughs> but uh, we are joint top of the table here. Only two games into the season. But it's an early clash here. We take on Atletico Madrid. Both teams undefeated in our opening two. So this is going to count for a heck of a lot. They're probably our biggest competitors for the title this season. And let's see if we can get the job done. A lovely day for football here. Welcome to you. Martin Tyler here, Alan Smith alongside me. And it's the first real test for Jeff and his Barcelona team today. Yeah, thanks, Martin. I'm excited today to respect the Jeff against Diego Simeone, two of the greatest managers around at the moment. Should be a tactical masterclass, this one. Well, it's interesting to see how Barcelona have lined up this season. New signing Silva on the right side of the pitch which means that Adama Traore is on the left. He's now got the freedom to dribble inside and have a look at the goal. And I think it's clear Silva and Traore are the ones to watch. However, we just cannot go without mentioning their striker, 21-year-old Sergi, who was Barcelona's leading goal scorer last year. Yeah, I mean, the question is, can he stay away from injury? It's never been an issue of talent. But he's missed quite a few games to injury over the past few seasons. He needs to be available more often. Well, it is Atletico now who are turning up the pressure. The shot's on. How's he done that? It's a fantastic save. He was almost wheeling away to celebrate there. And the keeper, quite rightly, has demanded why he hasn't been closing down. Well, Barcelona's defence has not been great the last couple of seasons. But so far, they have remained resilient against this Atletico attack. And now, Silva looking to well, do his best Lionel Messi impression here. And it's a great impression so far. Well, that's over the top of the defender. And it's Sergi now. Oh, it's a tremendous goal. He took that chance to perfection. It's straight through the keeper's legs. And that is just a delightful finish. Yeah, that's a great goal. And that is what Sergi can do when he is available for Barcelona. Spectacular player. Atletico Madrid here need a way back into this game. And they just might have now. Andres Silva in position to have a go now. And it's placed right past Gravenbach. That could have, and probably should have, resulted in a goal. But Barcelona managed to keep their clean sheet as we head towards half-time. Oh, that's a strong tackle. The game is just heating up here. And just on time, the whistle blows. And yet again, it's Sergi who makes the difference for Barcelona. He's been so effective and got on the score sheet as well. Superb performance second half underway and it's been a great tactical match so far and right now it's Barcelona's for the taking 1-0 the scoreline scorelines usually are not too high between these teams but there is always potential for goals with players this good out there and here we go Sergi now played into goal but oh, what a happy goal scorer it's two on the night now for Barcelona's number nine well no Messi no problem Sergi takes the rakes here Alan his finishing ability is spectacular. It has been down the years. I know he works hard on it in training at Barcelona. They should be winning this game now. Well, hold on now. Chance for Atletico. Headed in at the near post. This could really change the game now. Can Barcelona see this game out? There's only a few minutes left now. Seconds left now. Will there be one final chance? Tries the shot here. De Paul. And it's saved by Barcelona's David De Gea. And that's why you try and pick the very best goalkeeper available and he's really come to the fore there. Well, that's it. It goes without saying. This is a big win for Jeff and his team. Barcelona remain in first place just four games into the season. All right, well, let me know what you guys thought of that commentary in the comments section. I'm trying something new, and uh, if you all like it, I'll try to do some more of that. But in the meantime, some uh, transfer action here. As Azuli out on loan to Bayern Munich with the option to buy, uh, and that's pretty much the only business we have to do here. 
but we are dropped an absolute bomb. Andreas Christensen release clause has been met by none other than Atletico Madrid just one or two days after we beat them in the league. And I think uh, that's shocking to say the least. And even more shocking is the player wants the move. Uh, he actually uh, doesn't see his future here after only being here a couple months. And I gotta say, that's absolutely shocking. He's sold and with only hours left in the window, uh, we're sent reeling three hours specifically. Uh, and it's all hands on deck here. We got a couple options that we have been monitoring though. Arahu, who does want to move back to the club, and Kunde, who's been waiting on his chance for Barcelona, unlike in real life, for several seasons now. So honestly, I think Kunde is probably a little better on the ball. We're gonna go for it. And with Christensen on his way out for 145, we bring in Jules Koundé for only 140, again, making a profit on arguably a better player, but we left it too late, and although we had $257 million of sales, we also spent 333. It's been a crazy window. A lot of players in, a lot of players out, and really only having spent 76 million net, it's not too bad. We get some great players in. Koundé, unbelievable. One of the top three center backs in the world. And with the Champions League kicking off, I think this is the perfect chance to get our new signings in on the action here in our first game. But first, I think we gotta talk about something. Now, we've won a lot of trophies. Season one, Copa de España. Uh, season two, we won the Europa League. Season three, we actually won La Liga. And then obviously last year, we won the Copa de España for a second time. But despite all of that success and trophy winning, there's one thing we haven't won, and that's the Champions League. So I think that is our number one priority this season. Uh, we have a pretty easy group, uh, relatively speaking at least, and I think we could be able to make a deep run. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, well, plenty of talking points in this one. Uh, first up, Jules Koundé makes the starting 11 uh, right after signing for this team late, late in the window. But we've got our man, and honestly, he should be a real quality player in that back line. But the other is that uh, former goalkeeper Robert Sanchez, who we sold at the end of last season, is starting for Fiorentina. Sometimes it feels like you can't write these storylines. Uh, but he will come up against us, and hopefully uh, he won't be too much of a problem for us as we look to get ourselves in front in this game. And despite a little bit of early pressure here, Barcelona looking up for the occasion. Beautiful passing sequence here in the buildup, and it's just end-to-end -end stuff. Bernardo Silva on the receiving end as he cuts inside. Little dink over the top for Gavi. Great chance! Just wide of the post, and that was not far off at all. Gonna have to do a little better than that to test the goalkeeper, though. And like I said, Robert Sanchez in goal is gonna be the one to beat. He's a good goalkeeper. Oh, he couldn't start for us over De Gea like he wanted. 85 overall, uh, definitely nothing to uh, turn your nose up at. So let's see if we can't uh, test him a little bit more in this first half here. Sergi plays it through. Pedri, little dink over the top for Gavi. And he back heel. Bernardo Silva, great chance, deflected. Oh, everything but that final ball or final shot Barcelona. We've had some really, really good looks at goal. But <sighs> halftime ends without anything. Nil-nil and... Despite all of our possession and all of our chances, we still have yet to break the deadlock. Well, it's all to play for here in the second half, and uh, despite some good chances, our front three, who's been much touted over the last couple of games, has yet to really do anything in this one, but Bernardo Silva, a oh, lovely move, and he cuts inside. It's exactly uh, tactically how we've set this team up to perform, and now Traore likely to do the same. Cuts inside and brought down for a penalty. Adama Traore, oh, so effective off the dribble, and uh, there's nothing any defender in the world can do when he gets up to full steam like that. Now, Sanchez, Sergi, showdown here off of the penalty. Can our number nine score the opening goal? Oh, no, Robert Sanchez denies his former teammate, and this one looks personal, <laughs> like we've said before in this episode. Robert Sanchez comes back to bite Barcelona in the chance that could have separated the teams here. Adama Traore, though, we are far from done in this one. 15 minutes left, still going. Traore, lovely run from the winger. Can he score? No! Sanchez again comes up big with a strong hand to keep that one out. And we simply cannot find the back of the net so far. Although, another chance on here. It's Menino playing it through. Sergi, another chance. Another save from Sanchez. That one... Definitely didn't test him quite as much though. About five minutes left in this one and now Fiorentina, can they get themselves in front? It's Jared Bowen, a former respected Jeff player. 
Can't quite do anything there. This is going to be a tense finish to the game, although we've probably been the better side. Uh, we really have nothing to show for it so far. Triori now. Menino, who has the space to run, and he picks out Sergi. Lovely touch into space. What can he do? Oh, how about that? Rounds the goalkeeper. <laughs> and if you're going to save his penalty, you got to be ready for something like that. Sergi turns on the flare here to absolutely embarrass his former teammate. I'm sure they came up against each other a lot in training during Sanchez's uh, year or two years here, but... Uh, this time, <laughs> he gets the better of him on the Champions League group stage. And uh, all we got to do is see this one out now. Surely the whistle will blow at any moment. Menino looking to play it through, and he's brought down. Oof, lost his head there at a vital moment. He gave the, way, uh, the penalty away earlier, and now a red card. Awful game for Indica, and Gabriel Menino did ever so well to take the touch away there. Surely now, Barcelona on their way to a win, and if Sergi can hit this free kick, I think it's just the icing on the cake at this point. Can't we make it 2-0? We've already seen him once this episode hit a beautiful free kick from almost the same position, but uh, as we've seen, Robert Sanchez, tough one to beat between the sticks, and he makes the save look easy. Whistle blows, but Barcelona, a win in our first game in the Champions League, still undefeated so far at, uh, in all competitions this season. And it is a lovely performance from everybody involved. It's honestly a dream start to the season. This new signings look to have fit in well. And on we go. Well, it'd be nice to get a breather, but uh, not yet. Real Madrid, Barcelona, El Clasico here. Only four games into the season, and we've come up against Atletico and Real. Both Madrid teams giving us a challenge. And I think the talk here is going to be consistency in the lineup. We're going to roll with what's been working. And on we go. Splendid day weather-wise at the Santiago Bernabeu. And respect the Jeff brings his undefeated Barcelona to the home of Real Madrid. And El Clasico is underway. All right, well, it's our second big test here, but we're on a winning streak. All we got to do is keep that up here. Lovely tackle from Pedri, who's actually been playing as a defensive midfielder this season and done a great job doing so. Gavi plays it through. Sergi, Traore, lovely move. And Traore gets the better of the Real Madrid right back. Now played through. It is Bernardo Silva cutting it back. To, oh, so, so close. Beautiful passing sequence from Barcelona early in the game. But uh, Real Madrid showing that <laughs> they're not going to be that easy to beat. Jimenez now charging through the center of the pitch, plays a ball through, just about seen out. Whew, Vinicius, not far off at all. It's a great save from David De Gea, who's been unbelievable this season. And now Garcia looks to play it out of the back, and the pressure from Madrid catches us out. Jimenez sends it wide. Probably should have done better, <laughs> but we are dealt a, a little bit of a lucky play there as we maintain our nil-nil scoreline. Both teams could have scored so far, but neither actually has. Adama Traore plays it through. Sergi looking for the return pass, and it's sloppy from the striker to give away possession. And now we might pay the price. Vinicius played through off the counterattack. What can he do? we got to close down Garcia, but it's saved by David De Gea. Whew, wow. Well, that's as good as a goal. That was going right in the top corner. And Vinicius, uh, in the pregame stats they were showing, Scored three goals in the last three games, so he's definitely a danger man for Real Madrid tonight. Sergi plays it through beautifully for Bernardo Silva. This is the chance, cutting it back. Sergi straight at Courtois. And again, a little underwhelming there from our striker as we take this towards halftime with the scoreline still level. If the first half is anything to go by, two shots for Vinicius, but no goals thanks to an unbelievable performance from David De Gea for us so far. Uh, the defense is doing its job, and now we need the offense to step up and uh, do exactly the same up top. Uh, now, it seems like the new signings have fit in pretty well. Koundé's had a good game in that back line, and a couple chances there. But on the bright side, we've kept them to kind of a minimum, although Real Madrid definitely looking sharp, and that was not far off. I don't know exactly what Abraham and Tamori are doing over at Real Madrid, but as a Chelsea fan, I do love to see that. Silva now playing it through for Sergi. Oh, again. Back line splitting pass, and it's Adama Traore here in a chance to put a ball in. It's a little too lofty, and right at the safe hands of Thibaut Courtois. Well, we've had our chances, but uh, definitely not making the most of them in any sense. Pablo Gavi plays it through. Bernardo Silva again. This is his kind of position. Sergi played through to More. 
sends Sergi to the floor, and I don't know how that's not a penalty, but he got away with it. 12 minutes left, still no goals. Pablo Maffeo playing out of the back. Barcelona, on the bright side, our build-up play has looked fantastic. We're controlling possession and tempo, but we need a goal here. And Adama Traore cutting in from that right-hand side, or uh, the left, rather. So he used to saying right. Menino now, the real chance, lays it off for Pedri. Oof, just a little too sloppy. Overplayed, maybe. And with time winding down, only one minute left in the match here. we got to prevent any more chances. It's Abraham, top of the box, cutting it inside. Vinicius, it's saved by De Gea, but in from Brahim Diaz. Oh, heartbreaking stuff here for Barcelona as we lose the very last kick of the game. Oh, well, we said earlier it was probably going to be a tight game, and in the end it ended up <laughs> just coming down to that one chance. And David De Gea, impeccable all night, and unfortunately for him, that is really, really harsh. It's just palmed into the path of the attacker. Right place, right time. We are seen out to a defeat here. 1-0 It's our first loss of the season, <laughs> and that one has got to hurt. But let's keep our heads up. It was not a bad performance by any stretch. And although we did lose this one 1-0, one we will be looking to bounce back immediately. And on we go with the league campaign. Now six games in, we did sim one in between. We are still top of the league, 15 points. Atletico Madrid breathing down our necks, and despite that win, Real not exactly doing great. Now, Sergi, six goals and six appearances this season. He's been unreal and looks to have really shaken off that injury from previous seasons. Menino has been our other star player, three goals, two assists, and Bernardo Silva, three assists already. He looks to have slotted right in. Great performances all over the pitch, really. Uh, Dama Traore, stats not unbelievable, but he's been playing really well too. Now, it's come to my attention too, I know you guys are going to comment uh, in this section down below that some of the numbers look off, so I'm changing them around. I know the rule is we've got to keep them under 25, so thanks for commenting that in the past, but looks like we got it under control. Uh, one or two players who were out on loan uh, couldn't make the cut, but Bernardo Silva at least will be wearing number 10. And with that said, the action comes to an end today. If you guys want to help me uh, manage the team, join the Discord. Link's in the description. It's free. Would love to have you guys involved for some of your input in behind the scenes sneak peeks. Also, consider subscribing if you have not already. Helps out the channel. Helps you stay up to date. And I'll be back soon with the next episode in this series. But until then, I'm Respect to Jeff, and I'll see you next time.